Hello there. <clears throat> I'm Scotty. You're not. Welcome. Back to the Pick 10 90s, do. Trying to get this. Every time I think I have it right, something happens. Right. And then I have to put it down again. I'm just trying to get the. <clears throat> we are on Mars Attacks, a movie I've now seen three times in my life. The first time I saw it. Uh, had to be around when it came out. Either we rented it or we I saw it on one of the cable channels back in the day, early 2000s. So it had to be probably on the cable channels. And then uh, my friend Eric got me a bunch of VHS tapes back when I sell it at VCR uh, from a friend of his. And because uh, they were getting rid of them. So I. He, they gave them to him, and he gave them all to me, and I took a bunch of them. Mars Attacks was one of them. And I remember putting it into VCR. Uh, <clears throat> I had a friend stay over that night. He passed out in the bedroom. <clears throat> Either in the bedroom or he was on the couch. One of the two. Because at the time, I think I sat, I sat on a couch in a chair. I think he passed out on the couch, to be honest. I think I had the bedroom that night. One, that one of the two. I think it's a couch. I don't know. But, uh, well, because sometimes when I had friends stay over, I'll let them stay in the bed so I could stay up later in the living room. Because if I go in the bedroom, I'm going to fall asleep sooner than if I would stay in the living room. You know, I don't, I haven't had people stay over for a long time. But normally I would say, take the bed and I'll stay in the living room and wake stay up later. Uh, but he passed on the couch. So, um, but, uh, so I put in Mars Attack. I watched Red Green Duct Tape forever that night, too, and that's when he fell asleep. And then I put this in, and I was just like, wow. What, what is this movie? So it's been years. Bought the movie from Walmart a few months ago. Haven't watched it yet. And when I was putting together Pick 10 90s 2, going through various movies, what I wanted to pick. It, I had this and Edward Scissorhands. But when I had to do my final readjustments, I said I had to pick one of the two. Only one Tim Burton movie was making it. So I decided this one was the one that would uh, be chosen. So, <clears throat> Mars Attacks is a sci fi comedy spoof film with various. What do you want to call it a spoof? A spoof. A spoof? A spoof. A sci-fi comedy film with various celebrities. Off the top of my head, I can tell you Jack Nicholson, twice. Annette Bening, Jim Brown, uh, Tom Jones, uh, Michael J. Fox, Pierce Brosnan, Sarah Jessica Parker, Jack Black, Joe Don Baker, the, the agent lady from uh, Beetlejuice. Uh, the hair curlers lady from um, Edward Scissorhands, uh, Natalie Portman, Glenn Close as the first lady, nothing less. Um, Danny DeVito, he's just there. Pam Greer, uh, Lucas Haas. Uh, I think I pretty much got them all. Is there any I'm missing here? Off the top of my head, I can't see any. Think of anything off the top of my head. Rod Steiger. That's about it. A lot of celebrities. A lot of celebrities. Lisa Marie Presley. Rest in peace. She just passed away. That's long ago. That was her, right? This was the other one. Lisa Marie was the daughter, right? Tim Burton used to be married to her. Um, Martin Short. That's the one I was forgetting. It's bugging me about me. Martin Short. So, yes, and the story is Martians come to Earth and start causing havoc. And now the world and the various celebrity characters, well, they're playing, you're not playing the not playing themselves, except for Tom Jones. That would be too funny if they were playing themselves. And it would, like, predate 
this is the end by years. It actually would have worked better if they were playing themselves. But no, they're playing actual characters. Again, except for Tom Jones. He plays Tom Jones. He even sings, it's not unusual, but twice. Because that was the big hit song that he did. And this was 1996. And so Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, I think, just ended at this point around this time. So, that was kind of fresh in people's minds, so that's the song they played, I guess. Um, and so we start with a scene that, at first I was confused about. Because there was no dialogue. Well, people were talking, but there's no dialogue. It turns out that there's a special feature on the disc. It's a two-sided disc, but I put it on the widescreen. Because the Blu-ray player I have, if you put it on full screen, you get a 4x3. Although the other one in the bedroom, it fills the whole screen completely, but something here and there but anyway um so put the widescreen version on the widescreen side started watching it and there's no dialogue i'm like but their lips are moving all you can hear is the score danny elfman score by the way we'll, we'll get to that um it's pretty good but we'll get to it. like okay what's going on so i rewound it so i i messed with the with the audio apparently it was on the uh, musical score, musical score only version of the film. There's a version you can watch. It was on that automatically, I guess. But put the sound on, rewound it, and so we start the film with some farmers, one Asian farmer and one not. And he goes, "Oh, hey, that smells pretty good. What you cooking? It smells like uh, it smells like bar you barbecue? No, I'm not. That's not me." What follows is a herd of cows on fucking fire. This is my reaction. That's how you flame broil a burger. And somehow, I think this is a message to the Happy Meal people. <laughs> like, hey, because they criticized um, Batman Returns about how they couldn't they couldn't promote the movie with their Happy Meal toys because of how weird and freaky and violent it was. So he's like, okay, there's your flame broiled burgers. There's your <laughs> I don't know. It's funny. And then we get the opening with all the celebrity names and the score by Danny Elfman, which is pretty good. But I, I you listen to it. I think maybe Invader Zim stole from it. It, it sounds very Invader Zim-like. I mean, not completely. I think maybe Invader Zim took whoever was in charge of the music of Invader Zim said, okay, I'm going to the score, the opening score from uh, Mars Attacks, tweak it, and make it uh, my own thing. Because it sounds very dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-d
That's the only thing that makes sense to me. Because to me, the weirder role for Jack Nicholson to play is the president. He makes more sense to play the weird, drinking, smoking cowboy. But that Benning's his wife, and she's a... Like a Buddhist person. Jim Brown is there as an ex-fighter who's trying to get his wife back. Who's Pam Greer. He works at the Vegas Casino doing what? I don't know. He's just there taking pictures. It's one thing, but he's wearing like this weird getup. Maybe they, I, don't, I don't know. Danny DeVito is also there. Doing what? I don't know. He's just there gambling, I guess. Yeah. There's one good line I like from him when he sees Tom Jones. Hey, you're Tom Jones! It ain't unusual to be like anyone. It ain't unusual. Hey, you're Tom Jones, right? It ain't unusual to be loved by anyone. I don't know why it makes me laugh just how he says it wrong. It ain't unusual, but it's Danny DeVito, so of course that's how he would say it. Not much for his character, but... Then you have these... Joe Don Baker and his family living in a trailer park. Joe Don Baker, his wife, was the curler, lady in the curlers from um, Edward Scissorhands. Uh, the grandma, who is the agent lady from Beetlejuice. Lucas Haas is the oldest son. I think there's a sister there, too. I'm not sure. And then Jack Black. Maybe Lucas Haas is not the oldest son. He's the youngest. Jack Black is the oldest, and he's the army guy. Doing it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jables. Terrible southern accent. Why is he even doing a southern accent? John Doe Baker barely has a southern accent. And he's... I mean, John Doe Baker kind of talks like this, right? But... Jack Black... Jack Black is talking like this with a Matthew McConaughey style accent. The two different southern accents. John Doe Baker talk real fast. Kind of like this. Really good. A little bit of song to it, but not really. And then you have Jack Black being all laid back. It just doesn't work. It doesn't work. He does die right away when they send him out there. But uh, he's in like, I'm the incentive to take care of the aliens. And then, okay, the Martians. The Martians. I think he says the Martians. Whatever. So they have this big ceremony to welcome them. And the Martians say, we come in peace. We come in peace. They release a dove. They shoot the dove and start killing people. Jack Black dies. Oh, Michael J. Fox and Terry Nelson Parker are this couple who are both reporters working for opposite uh, news station affiliates. So, okay. Terry Nelson Parker gets to uh, interview Pierce Brosnan. And uh, Michael J. Fox is like, well, you know, I wish, I wish we should have gotten that. How he does his little head tilt. You know, we should have gotten that, you know. As his Parkinson's started to get him, he did the head tilt more. He only did it very little bit in Back to the Future and Teen Wolf. But as he got in the night, especially if you watch Spin City, he does that head tilt when he talks. Uh, you know, and he puts his hands in his pockets. It's, you know. I think the fact he puts his hands in his pockets was so they didn't see the shaking. It's fine. You see him now, it's kind of sad, but... He's almost childlike, you see, now you watch some of the stuff. I follow on Instagram and stuff. You know. But. It's too bad. I think Muhammad Ali had it too, didn't he? Parkinson's. Maybe Mr. T, I think. Uh, but, uh, Mr. T had some. But anyway, I do like when <laughs> this starts up, right? Because the aliens start attacking, and there's a point where Michael J. Fox and um, Sir Jessica Parker are crawling toward each other, put the hands out, she grabs Michael J. Fox's hand, and then it, the camera pans over to reveal that he's been lasered, and it's just his hand left. I'm sorry, that's hilarious. I was laughing, I'm like, ha! That's, I'm sorry, that's hilarious, you know? Yes, there's a lot of things they take too seriously, but honestly, with the way this movie ends, how they defeat the aliens, you can't take anything seriously. They're doing scientific... They're out there spieling out scientific, scientific mumbo-jumbo. 
yes, it feels a little too blah, serious like. But I don't know. I had fun with this movie. So Sir Jessica Parker is taken and kidnapped and her head detached from her body. They put her dog's head on her body and her head on the dog's body. And I'm sorry, but that's freaking funny. <laughs> Lady with the dog's head. Now Pierce Brosnan, okay. They just take his head off and have it held there. That's stupid. Obviously I couldn't figure out anything to do with his head. I would have put it on Octopus. You might have a CGI budget. The CGI. Okay, I've heard people say this is shitty CGI. This is 1996 CGI, and for 1996, it still looks okay. Sure, it's not Jurassic Park. Far from it. But it still looks fine. And in my opinion, I don't think it's supposed to look good. I think it's supposed to look like this. I think Tim Burton wanted it to look like this, because that's the whole point. It's supposed to be a cheesy alien invasion throwback film. And that's what it was. And if you think about it, those cheesy alien invasion films from the 50s and 60s, they had stuff. Even like Godzilla, you see they're very serious in the delivery of the words they're talking about. But they're talking about a giant-ass lizard, or a giant-ass moth, or a giant-ass three-headed dragon, and they're being very serious about it. I think it's supposed to be tongue-in-cheek, though. And here they are, talking about aliens that only say, ak, 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 ak. I think it's supposed to have a little bit of cheese to it. Maybe it's a little too serious, but I think it works. All right. So you got a couple of survivors. You got Jim Brown trying to get back to his family. And he ends up meeting up with Annette Bening and Jack Nich the other Jack Nicholson. And he gets lasered. So what the hell was his point? Well, he, not lasered, but he gets killed when he's trying to sell a hotel. He dies in a hotel. Who knows? And then you have... So it's Jim Brown, Annette Bening, Tom Jones, and the waitress lady that was with Jim Brown. And so Jim Brown goes out to fight the aliens. He gets his ass handed to him. But he, I do like how he's just, he's just going to box these aliens. And I'm sorry. Jim Brown boxing an alien is funny. I'm sorry. It's funny. He's hitting the alien. And he's going, you know, and it's in the bubble. But he's going, and it's going to keep going. Even when it bursts open, like the, it cracks. It's funny. And it's even funnier that there are a bunch of aliens just standing there watching this fight when they could just all jump on him. Eventually, they do. But, and this is the funniest part of this, he's still alive. I remember the first time I saw, well, the, the VHS time. How much on VHS? I laughed. This time, I, I remembered what happened. I'm like, he's not dead. I remember him being alive. But I remember when I watched that VHS, I went, yes. He's still alive. Of course he is. And then Tom Jones. <laughs> Tom Jones, by the way, the only hope of escaping the aliens in this plane is Tom Jones. How was that not funny to you guys? That is hilarious. And yes, Tom Jones is just, he's not being tongue-in-cheek. And like I said, if everyone played fish and words with themselves, it could have been funnier. But it still works. It still works. For me, the Tom Jones stuff still worked. Sure, he's not goofy and outlandish, but I think it works. And, uh, so Lucas Haas's character goes to save his grandmother while the alien sneaks into her trailer. And she's listening to headphones and comes unplugged. Slim Whitman music she's listening to comes out and the alien head just bursts. Turns out the alien's weakness is Slim Whitman music. Not nukes, because they try to... The nuke government doesn't work. music. Oh, one thing I gotta talk about. The president of France calls Jack Nicholson, the president of Jack Nicholson, and says, Oh, hey, the Martians, they want to be friends with us. And he knows, because they, they twice tricked the Americans. With the whole, oh, we want to be, we are, we come in peace, we come in peace. And then they start shooting at one. And then they say, we want to meet in Congress, which is, it's a trap. And they kill almost everyone in Congress. So here they're like, oh, we have friends and they'll be friends. And Jet is going, get out, get out now, run, get out of there, get out of there. Too late. Marston's killing the French people. They are French fried. I laughed. 
And how Jack Nicholson dies. I'm sorry. It's weird. It, that It's not funny. But it, it's confusing. Because these... Like, he makes this big-ass speech. Right? This big-ass speech about why can't we all just get along? Which is a Rodney King thing. He, the Martian is crying. And he's shaking hands. Then the hand comes off. And it climbs on him and it spears him. He falls down. He sticks up and they put the Martian flag up there. Sorry, that's funny. That's funny. That's like one small step for act. One giant leaf act kind. Right? My arm just cracked. That's funny. I'm sorry. So Slim Whitman music is the way to defeat them. And yes, it is ripping off and or paying homage to Attack of the Kill Tomatoes when they use the world's worst love song to defeat him. But it could also be a nod to how cheesy the endings and conclusions to those sci-fi films of the 50s and 60s were. Like, perchance, a movie this is kind of paying homage to War of the Worlds, where they're defeated by Jonas. Which is just as stupid, but... Yes, and then a lot of people criticize signs because the weakness is water and they're invading a planet that is made up of mostly mostly percent mostly water. But that's the thing. It's always been a thing with the invasion movies. They're stupid. Alright? Especially the ones in signs, but they're stupid. <laughs> right? But that's always been a cheesy way to do those. And science is taken a lot more seriously than those. So maybe that's why people don't like it. I think it's fine. Maybe, who knows? Maybe, maybe I'll review science sometime this year. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe I'm going to do a whole Shyamalan review here. Or maybe, maybe not. Oh, no, I don't know. Who knows? Only I do. Anyway, uh, yeah, slow movement music. And so, because of this, Lucas Haas gets a Congressional Medal of Honor from Natalie Portman, who was the president's daughter, and now that she's the only one still alive because then close bites it too. She is the president. What happened to the vice president? Or was that Martin Short? Oh, speaking of scenes that don't need to be in it. Well, I guess it's how the alien gets in. We go out to the president, but they could have just, it's they're aliens. It's blasted their way through, but the alien disguises itself as a woman, played by Lisa Marie, because the whole thing they established at the beginning is that uh, Martin Short, who I, is either the vice president or the press secretary, I don't know who he is, uh, sneaks women into the White House, hookers. And so he picks off this Lisa Marie alien chick. Lady and lady, alien woman, pardon me, and brings her in there, and then she just bites his finger off, and then kills him, and then goes after the president, but doesn't kill him. I don't know. Might probably not be needed, but the movie comes to a close after the slim women stuff and the thing, and then we have uh, Tom Jones. Comes out, like I'm alive. Like Jim Brown's still alive. I, remember, I, mean, I mentioned that. And then Tom Jones comes out, he's like, I'm alive. And then he did, 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 did the animals moving their heads. And then it goes to the credits with I'm not a usual playing. And I don't understand the hate for this movie. I don't understand people not liking this movie. I think it's pretty, 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 pretty good. I enjoy this every time I've watched it, all three times. Although I will admit, I don't remember the first time I watched it back in the early 2000s. But the time I watched it on VHS and the time I watched it here, I enjoyed it. Albeit, when I watched it on the VHS, I thought it was one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. But I love weird movies. And this was back when Burton was good, in my opinion. Uh, Tim Burton has made some weird movies, especially everything after Big Fish. All the stuff beforehand, like Batman, Batman Returns, Beetlejuice, Every Scissor Their Hands, Be Me Pee Wee's Big Adventure, this. Everything before, everything up to and including Big Fish was good. After that, 
He decided everything needed to be dark, gloomy, and star Johnny Depp. I mean, Ed Wood. I've never seen Ed Wood, but I hear, hear that's good. That has Johnny Depp in it, and so does Edward Scissorhands. But again, that's back when Johnny Depp, Johnny Depp, Johnny Depp tried with his movies until he just realized from Captain Jack Sparrow, even when I'm not playing Captain Jack Sparrow, whatever Sweeney Todd was, I watched five minutes of that movie, turned it off, and threw the disc out the window. Or not the window. I threw it away. I chucked the disc and landed somewhere. I was like, no. I didn't expect it to be a musical. I like musicals. But Johnny Depp in the musical just to me. One more thing in 2000 Johnny Depp movies just weren't my thing. <laughs> like that and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So I also watched Five Minutes for Five Minutes off and said new. But yeah, Mars Attacks is definitely pretty, 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 pretty good. So let's go ahead and roll the dicey. Two. Minute. Oh, it fell over. I got it. I got it. Sorry. Went to pick this up. First one fell over. So, two. See? Okay. And it is Basic Instinct. Yes. Finally, get to watch this movie with the. Twat shot. That's a good thing to call it. The twat shot. Legendary twat shot. And what? What is it with Michael Douglas starring in erotic the, uh, uh, thrillers? Erotic thrillers. This. The other one. <laughs> Fatal Attraction. That is. There it is. But uh, yeah. You know the little Michael Douglas movie I want to watch. Wall Street. Yeah, that's good. Maybe I should look up Walt, uh, Walter Douglas. Michael Douglas movies. Maybe Wall Street's good. Charlie Sheen's in that, too. Then they did a sequel about Charlie Sheen, but added Shia LaBeouf. Yeah. Although, if I do, base, if I do uh, Wall Street, then I'm going to have to do the sequel for like a sequel of Thon 3 down the road. Which I probably will do, because there's enough sequels to do it with. Anyway, what are your thoughts on Mars Attacks? Comment below, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'm Scotty, and I'll see you in the next one.